Hi guys and welcome to another edition of African Moderators Corner. My name is Leonard Ogunwaide. I'm the uh, founder, president and CEO of Face of Liberty International based in Nigeria. And I have with me today to on the panel to discuss a very, very cogent topic that is important to Africans. And that is price ceiling, price control and price ceiling. What does it mean? And how does it affect the economy? I have with me today, my wonderful panel is ever ready to give you back to back. Are we going to have an argument today? Uh, it is Dennis and uh, Joram uh, and Rodney going to have a consensus on this? Or are we going to have a discrepancy today where you guys watching right now are actually going to go back on our comment section and give your opinion? We're about to see, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My first panel is in no other, Mr. Dennis Boa. Please, can you say hi to our audience, please? My check, Dennis. Are hi, you there? Dennis. Yes. All hi right. Uh, happy to be part again. Yeah. You remember Dennis is the founder of, uh, is the co founder, if I may ask of the Untindo network all the way from Kampala in Uganda. And I have the program director of Action for Liberty and Economic Development, Aled in Entebbe, Uganda, on the call with me. Hi, Joram. You are muted, Mr. Joram. Hi, Leon. Hi, Dennis and LM. Um, Joram Masiga. Uh, Administrative Office Action for Liberty and Economic Development. Yes, uh, I'm a capitalist uh, and anarchist. Thank yeah, you. he's a capitalist and an anarchist. I will always call him, that's why I always call him an anarcho capitalist. And I have the one and only argumentating LM Rodney. Hi, Rodney. Uh, hi, everyone. This is LM Rodney. Uh, former president, Mackey University Political Science Students Association, and currently the deputy executive director trading and research, the Nkwame Nkrumah Diology Institute. Thank you. <laughs> you see, the, I, 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 are you guys seeing CV? The former president, the this, the that. I'm envious of these guys already. Who am I? <laughs> All right. The only thing I know is how to talk on the internet. All right. So, Guys, let's jump on today's discussion. Price ceiling. Uh, price control are said to exist whenever government mandates a maximum price, uh, which is called the price ceiling, above which a good or services cannot legally be sold, or a minimum price, which is called the price floor, below which a good or service can not legally be sold. So. In stating that fact about price selling, how do you think it's affecting the Nigerian, uh, the African, sorry, I, meant, I tend to put Nigeria sometimes because I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> how, does it, how do you think it tends to affect the African economy? The, uh, Aaron, Rodney, let me start from you first. Yes, thank you, Leonard. Uh, first of all, we have to understand that with the price ceiling, it's like uh, it's it's a it's a price set uh, above the equilibrium price that is uh, determined by the demand and curve supply. I mean, I mean the the, the demand and the uh, and the supply curve, and um, there's what we call the non-binding and the binding uh, price ceiling. So the non-binding is above the equilibrium, and the binding one is below the equilibrium. You know much as it is not the price flow, you know? But now we, in this aspect, we now question ourselves, is it okay to have the price ceiling? I would say that uh, it depends. It depends on the situations and what, what, uh, and what is the product? Is it essentially a very important product or it can be done with, you know, like a want or a, a need or a want? With what is a need? We can literally say that there's no, uh, they, there's always have to be a price ceiling. But with wants, you can give an example. I can buy a, a bottle of wine here at 2,000. And in some place, I can buy it at 12,000, you know, Ugandan shillings. So that's a want, you know. Those are things that you can 
deal with or you might not deal with, you know. But if at all it is a need, like give you an example of soap, of sugar, of clothes. I mean, clothes can also sometimes be wants, you know. But with a need, like even maybe uh, what we can, what we want to eat, you know. Sometimes it has to be relatively affordable, beyond which the low income earners, the majority of the population, are affected. So it's not set for the government to exploit the employers, but it is set just to protect the most vulnerable uh, section of the society who are so, so, um, they're so, okay, they are so eager to create a revolution against the rich class. Let me stop you. Let me stop you there. Let me stop you there. I'm still coming to you. I'm not going to any other of the panelists yet. You know, without price control, which automatically translates to price ceiling or price flooring, oh. the market will be on within the power of demand and supply. And that is where Joram on our formal on our last discussion talking about the invisible end of the market. The demand and supply will control the market. So let's give an example. I I run a, I run a pure water factory or table water. I don't know if you, are, if you have such water in Uganda, but I know you have table water. I say I run a table water factory, and for the last thing I finished my production cost about two thousand Uganda shillings, right? And I want to sell at two thousand five hundred. But the government comes out and says, I have to sell at 1,900 for everybody to enjoy. Do you think that will favor me as a manufacturer or I will have to pack up? Yeah, so that brings me back to the discussion that I had brought you at uh, to first because I said that there's non-binding and there's binding. The binding is below the equilibrium. So that's the non-binding. I mean, that's the binding one that is below the equilibrium. That is 1,900. First, if I told the government to set the, the, the price ceiling, it has to have understood the market flow. Yes? If at all it has understood the market flow and how the market is being is changing with time, it can set what is above. But if at all it doesn't study the market itself, then that means it will exploit the employers. And also the, the same thing is that an exploitative oligarchy is not different from a looting democracy, you know? So even when we have to have employers, they have not to over-exploit. But even when you have to have a democracy, a democracy that is of, always looting the rich people is also a dangerous one. So we have to create an equilibrium in this aspect. We have to understand, does the government have market researchers? to deal with the price ceilings in, this, in, the, in the economy. If at all it doesn't have, then that means the government itself is, uh, should I say, it's, it's basing its research on fraud common sense. That is so dangerous for an economy. Now, let me hold you there. Joram, I'm coming to you. I see you're laughing already because you already have a counter. You have a, I already have a rebutter for Rodney. So Joram, let me come to you. Do you think governments, I know where this will lead to, but I just want to ask the question. Anyway. Do you think government have the right whatsoever to set a price that I have to sell my product? Me, knowing fully well that it is my product, I have the old means of production. I know how much I use in get, producing this product. And now I want to sell it at the price that I want. Let's say crude oil or whatever products that is available out there. Do you think the government has the right to set a price that I have to pay, I have to, I have to use in selling, or I should set my price myself, or allow the demand, the invisible part of the market that you so much believe in, set the price? Uh, actually, the last statement you made is right. It's clear statement. But my, my, my concern is, what if, in the first place, I did not have the product on the market? I, as a producer, I don't have the market, the, pro the, the products on which you want to slap a price ceiling. What if I don't bring them to the market? What, which, where, do you, where will you slap the price ceiling? So what if I don't bring those products in the first place? Where will you put the prices? The issue is, 
government intervention elsewhere. Government intervention, government intervention in the economy is always a distortion. It distorts the market. The market is determined by forces of demand and supply. What exactly people want will determine the price of, on the market. People, government does not know what I think about today, what I want to buy tomorrow. Those, the demand and the value is determined by the thinking of people. People cooperating in the market are the ones that determine the prices, not government. Government does not know. They cannot set the price which it does not know. So it is a distortion for the government to intervene. We are much aware all the economy under control and intervention by the state using the socialist policy like that has always had problem. The economy must be released, must be left to operate on market forces and demand and supply. If we are to look at China, China under communist Mao and all the, the policies of commune boosting production and agriculture, they failed. East and West Germany, you, you saw Eastern Germany failing. We saw a capitalist West Germany pro, pro actually succeeding. We see all the American presidents trying to, to revise the wages, all of them failing, but we see Reagan, who left the economy to operate and relax the policies and control the government spending, the economy bo boomed. The same we saw in the 70s with Margaret Thatcher, the economy that was, was left to operate without government intervention, slapping prices, what and what, the economy prospered. So the principle is which value are you bringing in the market? Is the government determining that, that price based on the value or it is determined based on the sentiment and what people should get? People, they, the prices are determined by the value, not feelings of the people. And people, some people want to be protected. That is no sense. It is not economics. We must be on scientific economics of the market to determine what is actually should take the course of the market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much on that, Joram. Now, Dennis, let me come to you. Do you think the invincible arm of the market should control the market and not the government? Okay. Um, thank you, Leon. I, I, I'm a believer in free markets, but I don't want to go the anarchist way. So, um, it, it is it is it is very important that we we understand that humans generally we are very greedy people. We are greedy. Uh, if 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 we are given a lot of freedom, we can use the freedom against other people. If we are controlled, it may again be very bad again. So, I think uh, the, the 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 thing that Jerome was speaking about uh, of setting price according to value is something very good. Um, you see, when 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 we go into the market, of course, as 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 a free market share, was people who want to engage in the market. Of course, we want people to buy our products. We want to engage in a system of value for value, which I believe very many uh, entrepreneurs want to, or people who are who are also not uh, uh, capitalists also want. So the value system are uh, engaging in the value for value system. So. The issue of setting price uh, by the government to protect consumers, uh, Gerald mentioned it right, it is nonsensical uh, for state to come in to, to set price to protect people that they know. You know, one time we were having a discussion with some, with some government officials and, and they were asking tough questions of why, why, why are big people in the government uh, not not arrested for swindling money and then the guy is simply like they're not arrested for stealing money and then the guy is like they they are our thieves they are our thieves it's like they are their thieves they know them you get they know them so that's why they didn't arrest them so if you're coming up with price uh price control to protect people that you know it's very nonsensical but if you're coming up with price uh price selling to protect uh, the general interest of population of society in the economy, that is something that I, I, I someone as, 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 as a free market here, it's something that I'll not 
I'll not say 100%, but it is a certain level. It is a certain level because if you give it 100%, the state is the state is also very greedy to to make money. The state is also very greedy to to uh, uh, to to find ways of uh, having money into their pockets. Equally, uh, the people when they're left very free, they get so. Uh, that's, that's that's my style. Mm. Well, if I get you correctly, you said if left unattended, the government is very greedy. But on the same on the same side, you are not preaching a utopia like what uh, Mr. Joram is saying that uh, we should allow the markets to determine the total price of things. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Yeah. Rodney? Now we have two contrasting opinions, or shall I say, they are not totally contrasting, but not fully supporting. Where do you uh, stand? Yes, thank you very much, Leonard. I was, I would, I would still say that uh, the price ceiling is a public policy, and public policies are always political. Much as they are political, they have to have that aspect of also understanding whether uh, the community is uh, the is, is I mean the, the greater majority of the people are included you know let me t let me say one thing because Jerome will uh, go against the idea of politics politics is the art of managing societies the way you manage societies if at all it is bad that is according to you but it doesn't mean that politics is bad it's the art of managing societies but in this same way I would say price ceiling has to exist because they the iron hands or like uh, those uh yes the iron hands of the of the of the of the demand and supply can always go against the lowest uh i mean the the lowest uh, social order like maybe those who are at the bottom of the social order the vulnerable people because i would say that the society is not homogeneous we are different you know we have those rich class we have the the the, the rich bureaucrats, we have the, the Mao's middle class, we have the poor peasants, we have the subalterns, or like the workers also, uh, who are always vulnerable to the demands and the, 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 the forces of demand and supply. So according to the contingency theorists, they will say that we have to apply this according to the situation at hand. Yes, if at all fuel is increasing like day and night like this, how do we intervene? How do those who don't have enough money to uh, buy fuel be, be helped out? It's not all about how government is going to enjoy Joram. Take it easy. Not that everything is about the government. The government will always do something, but not that everything will go back to the government. I know the issues of tax base will come in, but at the same time, we understand. I talked about the wants and needs. Let me talk about phones. When you're buying phones, you buy an iPhone at 4 million. Ugandan shillings and you don't complain you know but when you're buying water or like maybe posho there's that price that you have to buy it at not beyond what a common man cannot get or like cannot even afford because if, if that's the case you know what's happening in Karamoja according to what's happening in Uganda Leonard people are dying of hunger why therefore they can't afford food at the same time there's drought you know so they don't have the purchasing power and if at all there's no price ceiling, then that means those people are not protected at all. You know, and I'm talking about needs, not wants. So the price ceilings should operate on needs. Hmm? Things that people have to afford than things that people can easily buy or not. Because I can easily buy uh, a phone at 8 million and I don't care. And the government won't say anything. I can buy alcohol at 200,000. And yet it is supposed to be bought at 15,000 and I don't care. It depends on where I am. That's my wants. But with needs, I uh, know the price ceiling has to operate. Thank you. Okay. Now, let me uh, uh, let me refer back to what you said at the beginning, saying the government is liable to make wrong decision. And that is the argument some economists and some free market advocates actually put in their argument. That their decisions most times are getting uh, get influenced by political pressure groups and apart from that, they spend on inefficient projects, which leads to an inefficient outcome. Owing that in mind, 
how do you, Dennis, how do you think we could argue this and probably find a solution to government not making wrong decisions? It has obviously shown in Africa and in everywhere in the world that the government tends to make wrong decisions because most of the time they do trial and errors and sometimes they do things in order to please one group or the other. So what do you think we can do as libertarians to help alleviate or find a lasting solution to this problem? Dennis. All right. Um, thank you, Leon. I, I think one, one thing we should understand is that uh, governments have an agenda or they have or they have a program. For example, I'll speak about uh, a government here. They have a program that they run on and they have their agendas or they have their aims. So, and it's very easy for them to uh, very easy for them to forget the agendas of, of their populations or the agendas of their uh, of their citizens because they have personal interests, they have uh, governmental interests, or they have things that they want to pass through. So, uh, what, what, one one thing that is uh, very one thing that is very certain um, that we we can very much relate to is that. Uh, as 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 free market chairs, as free market advocates, uh, this it is it is not necessary or it, it won't yield any big uh, for us to go for you to go radical or for you to go anarchist way because one your life is a priority. You should think about your life uh, very much. You should hold that as a priority. But uh, the biggest thing or the best thing that we can do is to. Uh, uh, Champion some of these ideas. Champion some of these discussions. Uh, involve in, uh, uh, in, 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 in involve ourselves in leadership uh, or, or politics uh, uh, to help champion some of these ideas. Everything starts with an idea. So if you influence a group of people with your ideology, if you influence society with your ideology, it is very prudent or very effective that to reach. Uh, some level. It may not entirely go off, but to reach a level. So, uh, championing some of these ideas, advocating for uh, some of these free market policies, uh, having having dialogues and conversations around uh, around this, and of course, involving in, in entrepreneurship as 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 young people and as citizens, because entrepreneurship is the background of uh, building uh, or breaking societies. So. If we involve ourselves in leadership and in, in entrepreneurship, uh, it's very important and it's very uh, effective that we shall we shall move we shall move baby steps to to, to wherever we want to uh, to to to, uh, to might not go to a, a national level, but to start by we speak about some elections speak about communities so much. We start with our communities, start with your community. You don't jump straight to to national. And yet your community is still having the same. So to start with their communities, we champion these entrepreneurial and creative ideas, creative entrepreneurial solutions, creative dialogues and, and, and creative solutions to tackle some of these uh, national issues. So start away from your society, start away from your community and build up. Okay. If I get that right, you're saying that we should start from the community to educate people on this and we move from there. Mr. Rotney, your hand is up. Let's hear from you. Um, you can ask me again. So, the government is liable to, uh, to make wrong decisions. You made that clear. Because they are being pressured by groups, political groups and the likes. Sometimes they spend money on the things that they're not supposed to spend money on. How do you think we can mitigate this? and find a lasting solution to government spending a lot of money on things that they need not to spend money on and disturbing the market. Since you said a price ceiling, price control is awesome, but how do, can we reduce the wastage by the government or the unnecessary price regulation by the government that does not even hurt the government alone, us the masses that it, uh, they said they were trying to secure. 
Uh, thank you very much, Leonard. I would say that uh, I would first quote Karl Marx when he, said, when he stated that to be radical is to understand things from the roots. So uh, you have to understand how the political system works for you to understand its excesses and its uh, internal weaknesses and how you can curb the problem itself. The issue is that uh, most of their issues are not research-based. Research is very important. Uh, that's why they say in Africa here we contribute 0.1% to research. One of the most critical issue areas in development, even in industrialization or even agriculture, where there's no research, there's no development. So if at all the governments can invest good money in research, not this kind of research where you say that I've went to my village and I've found out that these people are sleeping hungry and yet you've eaten all the money. That's also other government, those are the excesses of the political system, you know? That's now the moral fabric of the people in government. And those are the reflections of, of who we are. We, 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 we were in the village here. Yeah. Oh, we were always uh, complaining against the government because the government is always having a progression of having different people entering the government every year, every time and again. But the same, the same outcomes, you know, it's because of the moral fabric. Are they prof is professionalism being respected? I, is administration at the highest level of providing services to the people very well? If not, then that means there's always fraud common sense defining that, okay, because I know that Dennis is always over exploiting these people, let us put the price ceiling below what he is, is, is giving people. And we affect him indirectly. And some of them are political, as I had told you earlier on. Some will be like, uh, Dennis always pretends that he has a lot of money. Let us now do this again to uh, affect him. But also I want to say one thing, Leonard. To give an example of what happened some years ago, in, I mean, during COVID-19 here in Uganda. Um, you know, uh, the transport cost to, from, you, from Kampala to, to northern Uganda, that is maybe Lira, it was, it was always at 20,000. But due to COVID-19 and when the, when the president said that he was going to close the economy, the prices started increasing because it was there were days that were counting now, you know? The, 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 it was now to, the, to Thursday, and uh, on Wednesday, uh, I mean, on Monday, the prices now started increasing from 30, 40. Because there is high demand. Way. Because there is high demand of It problems. now went, it went up to 200,000, where even those who couldn't afford had to remain in Kampala, they had to suffer, you know? They had to suffer because they were not given the chance to... Uh, to, 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 I mean, to be helped out because some of them never had relatives in Kampala, but they never had the purchasing power to travel, you know, and that's how the excesses of the economy can cause other issues, you know. So the government has to come in to create a hand just to help out, not to affect the employers, because the employers at one point, when you, over, under, when you underestimate the individual freedom at one point, it might go against you at one point, you know. Because when you, people are not always uh, happy with what the poor are doing. They'll be like, ah, I don't care. They'll always go against that. And that's why I say that an exploitative oligarchy is not different from a looting democracy. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So on what you mentioned, uh, I'm going to ask Durham, which, uh, which automatically uh, is already on Newton himself. So, uh, government intervention most times take away individual decision on how to spend and to hack. Economic intervention most times, if not all the time, takes some personal freedom away from the individual. What do you think we can do to mitigate this, in your own opinion? Ah, it's it's unfortunately that you have been jumping me, giving opportunity to others to speak uh, more than me. But I had some issues to first rebuttal. Uh, it's very bad to cut it free where you are seated, on which you are seated, I mean. Uh, all you are, if you see what we are doing here, the clauses we are putting on, there is no business related to government. We do, these are all tradings between individuals. So if you want to cut a tree where you're seated, uh, Bo and Lem should put off the clothes and give them to me who is advocating for the tree. Uh, it's bad. It's bad that my colleagues are so much contradicting. First of all, they, they are not valuing the, what we call incentives. 
do something for something. They are not valuing that. They are cutting the tree. They are not looking at the value. What the value? The, what someone come with? For example, if I have a factory, they don't value that one. They want to kill me, take my business, and remain poor also. Or they they want me to be equal like them. They don't want to value my freedom, my economic freedom. In other words, they don't look at my economic freedom that I came with my capital. I left the university. I slept hungry, saving some little money. I raised that money, and after raising it, I started a business. They want to force me. I should pay some workers, or I should charge a certain price. Instead of leaving me, I determine what the community want. By the way, the invisible hand we are talking about is not utopia. It is not always utopia, because when you go in the market and overcharge people, the free market has gotten what we call competition. It has very many people who outcompete you and come and take your market if you overcharge. Sometimes it is not always that you have to overcharge. The excesses are always there. So my friends, they were talking in contradiction. Because when they say that the government should be there, when they, all over we see the government has issues. For example, we look at all the government institution has selfish people. You are talking about selfish ministers. When selfishness is accompanied by politics, that is another, because the politicians take away people's resources. They don't create value. They don't have any value they create. They only take people's resources and then they do what we call redistribution. They use, if they create a job, they create out of redistribution, but they don't have so much value they put on impact. So what we should look at, it is freedom. Freedom is indivisible. You cannot take my things because freedom is indivisible. So I cannot come and go and take someone who's bow tie. I go and take his sweater. I take part of it. Then I will have taken his freedom. We should, people, we should look at freedom as a very important scar that we cannot take from someone. Lastly, um, I talked about value incentive. And then lastly, we should look at uh, respecting what the, the market gives because the market actually determines determines how much people bring in the market and how much is taken from the market. And I talked about the competition and competition determines in an open society, in an open market, very many competitors will always come there. And if you pretend to sell so much, of course you'll be out competed. That's what I believe. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Joram, the one and only anarcho capitalist. All right, Ellen, I know you have something in your mind to say because I can see your hand is up. Yes, yes, yes. I was saying that um, I would want to accept the fact that Joram wants to overemphasize on freedom, that freedom is very important. And yes, I'm saying that we also want the freedom. But uh, saying that politicians, are more selfish than businessmen is also contradicting because some of these politicians are also businessmen and some of these businessmen are also politicians so who are you attacking first of all and second uh when you talk about uh this price ceiling itself we shouldn't overemphasize on on, on attacking a certain group just to protect our ego you know we should now understand where does it apply and where does it it apply? That's why I was very categorical when I started earlier on that it should apply to needs, not wants, you know? Because when I'm buying a phone, I don't have to, when the, when the market is, you know, is, is determining the prices, I, I am vulnerable, I have to buy the phone and I have to buy the smartphone. So it is expensive, I have to buy it that way. But when it comes to needs, things to deal with survival, things to deal with a die, I mean, these are, they, they call them primary reinforcers, you know? So money has a dramatic influence over the primary reinforcer. So the government doesn't apply the price ceiling on every product. It identifies those products that are essential for human survival. And those are the things that we're talking about. Now, if I told people are dying of hunger elsewhere, a businessman won't, will say that that is a cost. He can't go and provide free services there. You feel like that can't happen. But it will now bring in the aspect of the government as a, as a third sector. I know that the government at one point can be it can also be uh, contradicting, but at the same time also it offers services to the most vulnerable people who are not catered for by the businessmen who are profit oriented. 
you know so we are talking about needs here that's why we talk of hunger famine and whatever and the government has to operate but at the same time i consider the fact that uh when you talk about freedom uh, joram you talk you overemphasize on the first generation rights that are faculty based morally uh, moral faculty and mental faculty these are the two things but you're too you're still vulnerable to the market the market is already systematic you know and at the same time also you now find yourself thinking as a group of other people that now brings us to third generation rights still the same thing we are a group of youth being affected by the market forces and now we are on the solidarity rights you know so at, at this aspect we realize that the price ceiling itself it has to be higher than the what the gap, what the demand and supply is already offering you know to understand the, it clearly you know but if at all it is below or it is nearer to the equilibrium then at one point if at all the price or the, when if at all the market changes at once it might affect the what it might affect the price ceiling so we want to also understand that as the the, the changes of the market but at the same time we have to understand are the people able to purchase what you're paying i mean what you're providing is the issue yes if at all Durham, you've set a price of push you at 8000 and yet you're operating a local a local market what do you expect you know this is this is common sense i mean that's what i'm saying thank you thank you very much mr rodney uh mr dennis let's hear the, your final parting word on this uh, before we call it a day Okay. Um, thank you, Leon. Thank you, Jerome and, and Rodney. So, uh, for, for politicians, I believe they were leaders, and uh, like like Rodney is saying, they are leaders who are politicians, and they are politicians who are leaders. So, uh, I, I know, I know, I've, I've met, I've met very many people like Jerome who want to bring out the, who want to rule out the fact that the government, the government, the government, politicians, what? So I've met the, a very big group of people <laughs> like Joram in the internet. <laughs> so so I, I, I want to say that uh, you see the market in itself is, is, is like a school. The market will rule you out if you are doing things that are not within maybe the lines of the market or, or not, uh, okay, not in the lines of the market, but if the market will rule you out technically, uh, if, if, if you are uh, having things to do that are uh, uh, either putting down people or, or, if, or if you are an entrepreneur and, and you're completely in a different line with other entrepreneurs, if you set prices high, if, you, uh, uh, if you're selling your goods at a high price, so there's what you call creative destruction. Someone will always come with something better than you and they'll technically kick you out because of bringing something that is better than you. So. Uh, um, the, the idea of price ceiling, the idea of price ceiling, and the idea of uh, the role of government, the idea of the role of politicians, the idea of the role of leaders and individual uh, entrepreneurs in the market is, is, is something very important. But look, we also have to understand that uh, we, we, we all have different, uh, all have different agendas, all have different abilities. Like I did mention earlier, we are human beings are generally greedy, and the governments are also very greedy. So uh, it, it is it is it is up to us first of all to start with the individual level. What do you want in the market? Uh, what do you want to offer? What, uh, what 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 are you willing to offer? You get. So it is very important we put some of these facts right. Not just. Not just speaking about how we how how government is uh, is, is 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 of no role, is of no use. How politicians are just thieves and what and what. Because, like it or not, society is now running on politics, or uh, society is now uh, politics plays a very big uh, part and position in society today, in the business and in every sector that we're in. So shouldn't pull out that fact. And and these are some of the things that we shall keep talking. Just in mean, like a sense we cannot do anything. If we say okay, government, and we don't need government. So Jeremy, what are you going to do? Apart from just talking on it and what are you going to do? You get so we can have these discussions, but there's uh, you should mind about <laughs> you should mind about your life, man. You should you should you should mind about your safety, you should mind about your your well being. 
and and we can champion healthy uh, healthy uh, advocacy campaigns, healthy discussions, healthy conversations. We can champion uh, we, can, we can champion healthy entrepreneurial practices uh, as as libertarians and as people who want to have an end goal of having a free and prosperous society. We should not speak about freedom in illusion because uh, it is freedom is very big and freedom also has a cost so it's very important for us to have have such questions in mind and we should not be radical to answer them in in, uh, in, in any way that we feel is is can apply so we should be very logical in answering them we should be very logical in approaching some of these things because man the governments are uh, something else and, and people are also something else so that's for me thank you very much thank you very much uh dennis uh ronald reagan one minute one give a quote it says who live in the f we who live in the free market society believe that growth prosperity and ultimately human fulfillment are created from the bottom up not the government done and that buttresses what dennis is saying focusing on the individual then we can grow from bottom up and before we know it maybe one way or the other the same set of people the same set of individual that are trying to build up the markets today from the bottom up will eventually become the leaders tomorrow because we're obviously going to always have people in the government can we eradicate government in Africa or in the world completely? That is a talk for another day, our viewers. And maybe one of these days we're going to come here and we're going to try as much as possible to dissect this with another valued and good set of panelists. I hope you've enjoyed our discussion tonight with Rodney, with Dennis, with uh the one and only anarcho capitalist joe ram from uganda thank you guys for being here tonight with me uh ladies and gentlemen this program is brought to you by the effort of african moderators corner uh in conjunction with face of liberty international on tindo network in kampala an action for the but action for liberty and economic development in uganda do you want to join us do you want to partner with us to bring your ideas into life do you have one idea that is actually running in your mind that you want us to discuss about you see that comment section go there drop your comments drop your questions and we will be back here with another set and if you want this set of panelists to be here today you can request for them then we'll come back here and discuss this is just the beginning of change in africa this is the lead off this is the beginning and we will try as much as possible to do what we need to do in order to achieve that freedom we are looking for in africa is it going to be easy no one is saying that but is it achievable obviously it is achievable and we can't do it without you which is why we want to hear your opinion listen to what we have said listen to our opinion listen to our arguments like you see tonight like before mr joram is demanding for total no price selling rodney mr rodney is saying there should be price selling to a larger extent and mr dennis is like staying on the fence I, I, I'm a libertarian one way or the other, but at the same time, we need to have some kind of government intervention in the market. Which one are you on? <laughs> Do you want to be the tiebreaker here? Come into the comment section and give us what you want. Give us what you have. Give us back to back. Until next time, we bring you another edition of the Moderators Corner. I remain Leonard Adeogu Aide. I I'm the co-founder and uh, also the founder president of Face of Liberty International. And with me, guys, uh, let's have our parting words from people. Uh, Joram, let's say a, a 20 seconds parting words to our viewers.
20 seconds. You can unmute, please. Uh, it has a network. It was a network program that uh, I just jumped off. It's unfortunate that our colleagues, my colleagues, do have a certain, I mean, contradiction. They don't respect freedom of other Joram, people. Can we have your they party just want award? to put their hands in the pocket of can others. We have your, Joram, can we have your party award yes. for just 20 seconds? We'll come back to what their opinion. They have the right to their opinion. We all know that. That's why we are libertarians. Yeah. Their, their opinion is what uh, makes them who they are. Yeah. Your opinion is what makes you who you are. So can you please give yes. us a party award to our viewers in 20 seconds? Yes. Yes, for me, I believe uh, the government must have two roles, protect the rights and property of the people, and should not use force. Force is banished in a civilized society. So you cannot poke your hand into the pocket of others to serve other people. Even when someone is dying, you cannot go in someone's house else, in someone else's house to pick what does not belong to you. That's my cutting word. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The role of the government is to protect the right and protect the property of the people. The government does not have the right to come and pick money or put, pick something from me. Also, Mr. Dennis, let's have your petting words. 20 seconds. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Leon. Thank you, uh, my fellow panelists. Uh, uh, the journey to building the Africa that we want starts with us and, and through championing some of these very important discussions and ideas. Uh, from, the, uh, from the moderator's corner, we'll always be around to share these ideas, we'll be around to share and to, uh, to engage uh, with all kinds of ideologies and ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Helen, let's hear you. 20 seconds. Your party wants to have you with tonight. Uh, what I can say is that small minds discuss uh, people moderate minds discuss events and uh, great minds discuss ideas uh, for now we've been we've been showing how critical we've been in this aspect of engaging in ideology and that makes us who we are and that is so strong for us and we would wish to always go with this always thank you thank you very much everyone thank you for being here tonight our viewers thank you for watching and uh you know if you've not hit that subscribe button down there it is time for you to just go down there just click that red button and click the bell button so that you can always have the update information instantly as we're uploading our videos you're getting the update so that you can always listen and never miss an episode on the next week we will give you another episode and guess what the coming episode will be talking about one and only <laughs> socialism and the African society. What do you think? How do you think socialism have affected our African society? What do you think the solution to socialism will be? Or are we supposed to continue working with socialism? What do you think? Wait till you see the next video. Until then, I'll bid you. Yeah, well. Aloha.